Okay, so hello everyone. Um, I'm Alexander Baranowski, um, but people just call me Alex and welcome in my presentation about Census Stream 9, but in my opinion, it's the new hope you know, for the whole Census project. Uh, I'm Dev and Oops and Ops at Aerolinux. Uh, and there is the agenda for today's presentation. The, First point is that um, I will uh, describe the changes to the census live stream. Um, some of them will be like business likes, other will be like developer like. Uh, I will also point out the changes that are, in my opinion, good for the project and the changes that might be not as good as some people would like it to be. Then I will compare census stream with Relna beta. Uh, there are some scripts also that I used on my GitHub repository. Uh, I will also show that you can use the Tensor Stream to build software for Rel 9. Uh, and I will also uh, describe uh, adapting current pipeline from Tensor Stream 8 to Tensor Stream 9. And to be honest, it's trivial. Mm, I will do spoiler. OK, so let's get started. Uh, so, change is good. Generally speaking, everything changes. Uh, last year, mm, the change in direction of the Tensor project, oh, wow. For a short time, it was quite a storm, but then a lot of people actually get that. And it might be good thing. So uh, before the change, the CentOS was really clone. Right now, the CentOS is very upstream. Uh, then CentOS wait for fixes. Right now, CentOS creates fixes. And of course, there is the small uh, percent of fixes that uh, we won't enroll firstly because, for example, some security fixes might have embargo on them. That means that you cannot publish them uh, before. So, uh, but in most cases, when I think about the things like the enhancement and bug fixes, the uh, CentOS will have them sooner. Mm. CentOS was one of many. So, I will, on the next guy, I have a should graphic about it, but um, there is the whole ecosystem of EL, um, so Red Hat and President clones, and uh, Central was just one of them, the most popular, of course, the most successful, but, but one of many. In my opinion, right now, CentOS is the central point for whole EL community. Uh, before this change in the direction, the row bootstrapping, how the changes were introduced, uh, it was magic. No one actually knows. Of course, people just have knows that, but um, right now it's much more open. Uh, uh, before the change, there was some conflict of interest with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. I know that uh, no one who is in the census project would like to say that without probably, but in my opinion, there was the conflict of interest. Uh, and right now, there is no conflict of interest with anyone. Mm -hmm. And this is another very good change. Uh, before the change, census had Red Hat Enterprise Linux like life cycle. Right now, it's a little bit shorter, but I will address that later. Uh, for some people, this is the worst uh, part of this whole change, for most people, actually. And before this change, there was only a small number of packages, so a small number of developers and people who work uh, on CentOS. Right now, it's a huge number, and I will present it a little bit later. So. Uh, what I mean when I say that the center is actually the central point of whole EL community, by the way, I know that this um, graphic is great, but I, I'm deeply sorry that the, the red card is on, you know, the black letters on the uh, gray or nearly black uh, background, but, you know, I'm very stable genius, uh, like some people like to say, actually. Okay, so before change, there was Fedora, that was frozen, and from this Fedora, there was the whole bootstrapping process uh, of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And it was magic. Actually, no one can look into it. Uh, 
and uh, then we have the Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and everyone just uh, take the source code, recompile, add uh, their own projects to it, combine this whole ecosystem, and so on. So there was quite a lot of there is quite a lot of distribution. I use every distribution that is listed on the uh, on the distro watch that is very really cool. So uh, yeah, and CentOS was there. Of course, the most popular, definitely the most popular, uh, but one of many. And right now, the, because the, there is the Fedora and then um, package is frozen package from Fedora land, the CentOS, there is once more this whole bootstrapping thing and so on. And uh, everyone actually from this can and should actually contribute back because if you want, for example, I don't know, Spring Day Linux to have something and you find back there uh, and these folks find something, they know that if they want to contribute, they should contribute here and then to the CentOS stream and then it will run, uh, run finally in the Red Hat and then in the distro. And there is no conflict of interest anywhere. So before that, if, for example, someone finds some branding issues on some bugs, it's like distributed. No one actually exchanged like a lot of information about it. Um, and right now, there is the central point when you can actually push your proposal, your changes and things like it. OK. Uh, and the other thing is that uh, because the central stream is right now at least uh, compatible with Red Hat, it's once more the best place uh, for other projects that want to be uh, or want to run on Red Hat Enterprise Linux and other distribution downstream. To uh, say another good thing about the census, so, uh, but there is a lot of packages and a lot of resources invest in the CentOS Stream project. Uh, so you can go to the Koji Hub or Koji, this is the build system of the CentOS, and you can check that, uh, first of all, there is much more build host and there are five architectures. Uh, before that, it was like four. Of course, some people argue that we shouldn't separate uh, the into architectures into two, but uh, if you are the maintainer or packager, uh, you actually build mm, twice for inter architecture uh, there is much more users much much more uh, I count all of them including the robot users uh, and there is only the 14 on the sensor stream and about 368 on the sensor uh, stream 9 about 60 users did not submit any build but on sensor stream about like seven probably also so there's uh, like 300 packages that work on the centos stream line uh, if you look at the median um, of how many tasks were built were called uh, for each active package this is like the magnitude of course because the median should be here should be about twenty five thousand, and here about Eight or something like that. But that means that CentOS Stream is uh, much more distributed. And there are a lot of people who actually make the CentOS Stream. And this is my point that the amount of resources that uh, Red Hat put into the CentOS Stream, in my opinion, is insane. And I and this is something very important, in my opinion, uh, to stress because a lot of people are saying that, uh, and this is one of the drawbacks. But oh, there is no stability in CentOS Stream. I'm afraid of using it, and so on. But let let it sink in. Before that, you had like five people working on the build system of CentOS 8 Stream, and you have the confidence that. All of this extreme hard working uh, 
people with this very limited bandwidth uh, will provide the stability five right now you have like 300 people working on central stream and you are afraid so uh so yeah so this is one of them and uh, one of them was put argument with the stability i won't show the other one uh so going back to the ci the drawback of central stream and uh, mitigations to them uh so the first drawback that a lot of people are angry about is that the CentOS Stream uh, 9 has the shorter life cycle than RHEL 9 will have. Uh, but in my opinion, it's not as short uh, as some people like to cry about. Uh, I met the person who are running Fedora on the productions and they're like, you know, then this is not... Wait, you're running the distro that well is one and a half year, the whole life cycle. Uh, or even shorter actually and we are running some uh, cloud distributions for cloud uh, with rpm os3 but it's like just the snapshot only and uh, to answer this is the first thing that this mentality in my opinion might be a little bit unfair because uh, five years is quite a long actually uh, and the other answer for this a problem is move faster. Nowadays, when everybody is like um, deploy on the Friday, no sweat. But everyone have like continuous integration, continuous delivery, auto patching, uh, automated tests, and things like it. Why? You think that you all that why well, you think that having like 10 year um, 10 year life cycle might be a good idea maybe the change of the life cycle but it's five years is still quite a long it's a good thing for organization the other thing is that there is more updates and people are constantly that oh my god the kernel is changing yeah it is it's true but it's not a bad thing especially if you can mirror and you can mirror of course create a local mirror so you know you are not using a lot of bandwidth uh, and because there is more updates um, and there's more rolling it also means that well maybe the changes that you are applying are smaller so it's better that if something breaks you know that this is the small part only is responsible for that and if it's a problem because you don't like to update your system frequently uh, it's very likely that you don't have a rollback strategy so what will happen if system breaks actually and you can believe that uh, all the systems will always work because you are paying for them and so on but the experience of that of course the quality of the support the quality of the products is absolutely top notch but there is always probability that something will go wrong and if you don't have a rollback strategy wow it's on you actually okay i already talked a little bit about the stability so a lot of people say, oh, I'm afraid that it won't be as stable as the old CentOS was. Yeah. But as I already said, more resources are put into this project than ever. This is, in my opinion, I would stress once more, this is extremely important. Once more, you need to have a rollback strategy. If you are afraid that uh, some changes will break your system come on it's nothing bad just use the red button with uh, backup on it and you are good to go but i think that there are organizations like CERN for example that actually decided that tensor stream is stable and in my opinion it's a very good recommendation and the last thing that I'd like to say is that a lot of people in the Linux community tend to believe that uh, if you don't have this 
fixed point releases, but rolling release, but uh, it's not stable. But once more, maybe it might be even more stable because you are playing the small patches. I well in my uh, in my work sometimes I have a client and we support systems, but uh, well we uh, are not frequently updated. Let's say it that way, and uh, there is always a little mess when the next big release or some critical security vulnerability is discovered and then they're like okay we will patch our system and then they open the support tickets a lot of them <laughs> so maybe rowing actually in very case will be more stable because when you think about the uh, work that you have to do from Project Phoenix, the maintenance is one of the type of the work. And maybe making the maintenance small, and, and, you know, into putting into the smaller boxes or making smaller uh, is a good idea. So in my opinion, at least, rowing might be more stable. And forcing user to be constant uh, to constant update might be actually a, a good idea by the way a uh, lot of software right now like flat packs or snaps are auto updating and i never heard anyone uh, i never heard anyone that uh, is complaining about it okay Oof. Okay, so how fast the, right now we'll compare the census, some things about the census stream nine and red nine beta. Uh, this is very important, but this is the beta. So uh, yeah, but why these numbers are so low, like zero. So uh, actually check how many packages were updated. This is a simple script that is actually using um, repo query it's asking about the packages and the build date i know that build date and you also should be aware of that but the build date mean doesn't necessarily mean that the uh, package is available at the moment so uh this is the first thing the other things is uh, this number are not very precise because of the different time zones for example if the package is built in one time zone and you're in the other, of course, there will be some, uh, the, uh, the uh, oh my God, not resolution, but uh, the numbers might differ. Okay, I, I run it yesterday on base OS and upstream repos and um, in the last seven days, about 300 packages uh, were built for central stream about, uh, in 40 days, like nearly 1,000, and in 30 days, like 2,000 packages were built. And when it comes to the real nine beta, uh, you have like zero, zero, and in the, uh, in the last 30 days, like 430. But as I said uh, before, uh, this is beta, so um, it might be frozen right now. In the future, of course, the packages will be provided in the continuous way. Okay, when it comes to the compatibility, there was the great talk uh, about Rip Abigail from Pat. Uh, I won't say the uh, surname because I will definitely say it wrong. But there was uh, the great talk on the census dojo about Rip Abigail, and in my opinion, you should check it. Mm. I'm personally using Rip Abigail to compare our system with Red Hat, uh, but you can use it to compare any system with any system. So um, I created a simple script that is actually taking um, the uh, packages from Red Hat and from CentOS. Once more, treat it with a grain of salt because, for example, some packages require debug information to actually be precise, uh, and where were they were included? Uh, but it's quite a good measure how 
uh, compatible you are with our system, generally speaking. And uh, um, I discovered the three things. Uh, first of all, that about 98% of the packages uh, are banner compatible. And this is great, especially when you think about how many packages will build um, here, because you have like more than one, uh, about 1,600 packages that were trained with here and here in the last 30 days. And to have this kind of uh, compatibility, well, it's extremely good. So uh, the other thing that I will describe, of course, there are some packages that failed. Uh, you can look at the rip Abigail log and check it. And some of the packages failed because there is the newer version of this packet in CentOS, 9, uh, CentOS Stream 9. And uh, this newer version can provide additional, for example, uh, additional symbols and things like that. There was also a problem with download. Uh, well, right now this is the beta and uh, you can see that sometimes when you are using the real name beta, there's the problem, but the mm, uh, content length, so how how big is the package a mismatch between uh, the repo data and the package itself? Because, uh, well, I know, I personally know this bug is when you have, uh, a, when you build package twice and you put this package uh, into the, the repository, then you change it and don't change the version and don't update the repo data. Yeah, so, or if the repo data is uh, cached, the old repo data is cached also, maybe the thing. So there was some problem with download. Uh, you can actually you recreate it with this uh, simple script that I actually included. Mm. What I said, and the most important thing is that about 98 percent of packages are banner compatible. And this is great. And, and because they're compatible and there is, uh, you know, the compatibility is so good, you can actually use Sensor Stream 9 um, to build things on uh, RHEL 9 and run it then. Uh, OK, so I decided I will just make two packages. Of course, I can um, make a lot of them. but I decided well, we will use the ATOP. So this is one of the uh, process monitor that I personally like. And the other package that I like is the Terminator. This is the uh, terminal emulator uh, that is very simple to use. You don't need screen on mat or whatever you are using uh, to have multiple terminals in one window. Um, and I discovered the um, thing. Actually I, will, actually, I want to show it because uh, I have, oh, no, this here. I have some, but <gasps> no, my to stream machine is dead. But I have the row machine right here. Uh, I will just run the script. Uh, it will download the package and then try to rebuild it. Uh, the first package actually will work with ATOP. The second one will fail. This is the Terminator, but I stole from a Fedora rough hide. And this is the thing that I personally uh, don't like right now about the Sense of Stream 9, uh, is that the build route is not as full as might be expected. And I know that the, uh, the people from Apple and there was talk about it yesterday, there is the procedure in place when you can ask if this package could be put into the, the Apple or into the public build routes and things like that. And so this is, in my opinion, the big step in the right direction, but uh, if you are someone like me who is just using um, things and just really like to have them, uh, it's always a little bit disappointing, to be honest. Uh, so it might be smarter to use Apple in the future and Apple build routes because sensor stream build routes are 
well, the, the basically, basically there is this problem that if you add anything to this build rule and to the distribution, you create this whole maintenance area. And the more these devil packages you add and the other packages, the harder in the future it will be to maintain. And let's be honest, uh, we are here because the uh, CentOS Stream 9 and then Red Hat is the best Linux distribution in the world, the most stable. So uh, if you want these packages, but in the end, you might end up with a distribution that won't be as good as uh, it was. So uh, there's the conflict of interest. But in the worst case scenario, and I will show actually how you can do that, uh, Packer can always download from Koji, so you can always use the build system. And I'm really grateful that the CentOS Stream 9 keep the build system open to the people. And I will show it. Uh, okay, so uh, we try to build this Terminator, and there is no matching package to install. What I'm doing personally right now is I'm always using this packages.org, this is a great uh, website. I'm just searching for the package. And you can then find the source RPM that was used. This is for Fedora, but it will be probably in CentOS. Uh, this is the CentOS, oh, this is, this is Koji Hub for CentOS Stream. And you can find out that someone already built that package. It's, it is not included right now in the build root at least. And you can just download it, add to your own build root. Uh, you don't have to rebuild it. Uh, you can just take it. But then you, then you will probably have uh, at least two problems. The first one is uh, you will shortly discover that uh, there is always <laughs> this dependency tree, and uh, in this dependency tree, a lot of packages will probably be missing. So you will download package, create your own repo, then you have to download other packages. And you, this is this dependency hell that is like 1995, probably, or something like it. Uh, but you can do it. And I will be honest, I'm really grateful for it. But you can actually, before that, I remember with the CentOS 8, there was the time when uh, there was some administrative rule uh, because of the bandwidth and people who were abusing probably the code reboot system, by the way. But right now it's open. Uh, okay. I also have a small problem you know, with uh, mocks on L8. I have no idea why. It says that Sierra wasn't able to resolve something when I tried it on my normal. Like normally it worked well, but let's say that this is like nitpick. It's it's not very important my personal experience with. Uh, so generally speaking, if you want to run uh, and build on Rail 9 or CentOS Stream 9, you probably should be using CentOS Stream 9 right now. Okay. Mm, the last thing that I would like to say about the compatibility is that the third party uh, that I'm working for, so company I'm working for, uh, we uh, we have our internal system that allows us to create the uh, forks for for some organization, let's say it, name it, and we have and we maintain these forks. Then uh, we also have uh, uh, the internal test system. And two most important part of this base system is called Vardogar and Striga. And Vardogar, however you should pronounce it, uh, is the idea that you have your press period. And that sometimes, if, for example, you're in the bar and you're drinking with friends, and you just know that your friends will walk just in five seconds, walk into the bar. And it's great. It's like this precognition. I know that this is not scientific and generally speaking, this whole spiritual thing is, well, BS, uh, but we like this name. Uh, so uh, this system used to 
uh, check if some RPM or how uh, how some RPM is uh, uh, how you can compare this RPM to this RPM because uh, and we have this test Oracle but it's actually in the Red Hat RPM uh, and we run this Vardogar on Central Stream and the results were great and we run the other thing that is called Striga and it's from you might know Striga from the Witcher especially from uh, the season from Netflix right now and yeah we decided that this name is also great because we compare the two repositories and uh, to pass you have to like sleep with the Striga and the Striga castle and the Striga coffin actually uh, and the system also told us that uh, central stream right now is extremely compatible with RNA beta so we use Chance of Stream 9 as the level zero build root for Air Linux 9. Uh, and Linux 9 beta, of course, will be released in two weeks. I wanted it to be released before this uh, <laughs> census dojo, but, uh, uh, but well, thing, good things always take a little bit of a time. So, yeah. When it comes to the adapting Central Stream to the, some pipelines that I'm working on, uh, I can say that uh, once more, Tensor Stream 9 um, was extremely easy to adapt. And it was like trivial, actually. I remember when we uh, changed some of our pipeline from Tensor Stream 8 to Tensor, uh, sorry, from Tensor 8 to Tensor Stream 8. Uh, it was quite easy, let's face it. Uh, and uh, changing, adapting our pipeline from Tensor Stream. Uh, 8 to the Central Stream 9 is also trivial. Uh, actually, I, mm, uh, there is the Vagrant changes, so I decided that I can uh, provide uh, some of our internal uh, configuration stuff. And well, uh, the changes in Kickstart are trivial. I will actually uh, uh, oh, give me a second, show it. Maybe here, or oh, maybe here. Um, I might a little bit bigger. And if we look on the Kickstart that we are using, as you can see, actually we disable the CADAMP and instead of uh, just putting all the firmware uh, where there is the globe for it and well some enters and things like that right now lang is not uh, an us but utfa and things like it well it's mm, it's trivial it's actually trivial uh, the very same things come when we uh, check our and JSON configuration that is used by Packer. I know that there is this HashiCorp uh, specific language, uh, but well, this is on our wish list, on my wish list actually. Uh, and if you uh, remove the things like the work output directory is not Packer Central Stream 8, but Packer Central Stream 9, uh, the only important changes are that right now, it's not text and kickstart is in in the installation dot text installation dot kickstart uh, provided to the kernel um, or group actually i'm not sure uh, <laughs> to be honest uh, just to you know to make the uh, kickstart install so yeah it was trivial um okay the next slide uh, and the very same thing goes with our AWS pipeline. Uh, we release it shortly, but to be honest, when it comes to the AWS, uh, the, my favorite part of putting anything public on uh, AWS is uh, when you have to click all these mm, machines that you want to run. When you click it, misclick something, and well, sorry, <laughs> something failed. Uh, of, of course, you two or three days later, the support 
folks who got sorry you misclicked this machine is not the proper architecture or something i like get and you have to do this once more uh yeah i'm thinking like the account found or something like someone you know with excel and you put the okay in with excel and things like it oh yeah so adapting for the background so for our virtual machines and things like that were trivial when it comes to the containers uh well i will be honest i'm really happy of change that will about to happen because um before uh, before uh, this dojo we used and right now we are using uh, the old scripts that will create some directory change root into it create all of this uh, devices that are requ required, uh, then just you install uh, into the uh, change it root. Uh, with, of course, proper um, conf and things like that. Uh, and for census nice, we have to move from Enterprise Linux 7 to Enterprise Linux 8, actually. Uh, because there are these conditional installation things, but for example, if you install the Red Hat RPM config, you might install the GCC or RVM uh, and the YAM from L7 actually, uh, well, that's not supported very well. Uh, so we have to move to Inspiration Linux A. But, uh, and this is the thing that I'm really grateful yesterday uh, on this great conference that i'm grateful to be part of uh new gompa and dave uh, kaval guys i'm really sorry if i say it wrongly uh, showed uh, how the hypers uh SCAL special interest group make their own base container and i look into the hour scripts and i look into the script and i'm like well, well, we use that, definitely. I played it with a little bit yesterday. It's working fine. Um, and because of that, I decided that, well, it's maybe, uh, it's maybe a better idea to show how the nowadays best practices look like and uh, that you don't have to use all the scripts that are um, really messy, but actually I will go to this link. Uh, oh. I cannot go there uh, <laughs> because it's a PDF, okay. Uh, but uh, you can go over and you will see that uh, right now uh, you can ask the Builder service to a Builder or whatever you should call this part of Podman Builder and Scopel stack. Uh, can set up this uh, change router, uh, change route. Um, a file system for you if you are building from scratch and it's much more convenient and easy to maintain so yeah so this is definitely the place i will uh, uh i believe that you should into so i just decide that i won't show how we will adapt uh, how we are adapted some things but how we adapt because this is better okay final thoughts uh well first of all tensor stream has the new identity this is not just one of the real clone. No, this is the upstream. And upstream then uh, is extremely resourceful project. 300 packages. Whoa. I, I mean, like, really, whoa. Okay. Uh, Central Stream is in many cases better choice than any other distribution. You are moving fast. You have to. Uh, provide things that will run on Royal in the next release yeah go for it you prefer more growing star enterprise linux release than point releases go over you prefer small changes faster faster back fixes go over the central stream night is the central point for whole EL community Everyone benefits from changes introduced to Tensor Stream. Everyone. You find back, no, you don't have to put that into your distro. Of course, if it's a distro specific, then yes. But if it's not a distro specific thing, you have an easy way to provide it. And let's be honest, it's on GitHub. 
of course, you still can use Bugzilla, but I personally don't like. Uh, but it's on GitHub. You can you, you have much more opportunity to give something back to community. Uh, due to compatibility, CentOS Stream 9 can be used to build software for Rail 9 Beta. Uh, and the last thought is about updating, uh, adapting current pipeline from CentOS Stream uh, 8 to CentOS Stream 9. Oh my God. Uh, yes, there should be 8, of course. Uh, it's simple. It's trivial, actually. So, yeah. Of course, we are talking about the base system and things that are connected with the base system. Packages might be might differ. Okay, so that's all. Uh, I don't have probably anything more left. So if there are any questions, I'm uh, I would gladly uh, answer them. Yeah. There are a couple of questions in the Q and A. Um, question rel 9 beta is at version three uh so which one are you referring to in your talk mm, okay oh my god this is a very good question i will maybe start with stopping screen share uh, okay i'm referring to the one that i can install like take from the website use you update and then use so uh, it might be it might be that I'm using the wrong version, but um, I don't know that, like probably a week ago or something like that. Okay. And then one other question on here, uh, given that RPM downgrades are not usually supported or tested, uh, what rollback strategy would you recommend? Fold image backup and restore the system? Okay, so first of all, it always depends uh, on what you are running. So, for example, if you're running the containers, the uh, well, the rollback is actually does get the previous image. Yeah, that's all. Uh, if you are running the virtualized system, you're also in very good place, and depends how the system was set up. Uh, you can, for example, make LVM-based backups, uh, snapshot things like that. Uh, then just use the previous version snapshot. And I believe that um, this is actually that, uh, well, you, you are using snapshot or full system backups. And if you have a physical system, there's the worst case scenario actually when you think about uh, rolling back. Uh, well, the first thing you can actually try to do uh, is yum uh, history undo or something like it. It might not work well. It might fail, but then you should ask yourself if maybe other things that you can do. For example, mm -hmm. you can have the net installs, uh, pixel based installs in your system, and maybe this m might be the way. Uh, when it comes to the this physical uh, infrastructure, it's always the hardest to, uh, to do it properly. And to be honest, I, I, never heard, I have never heard of anyone who done it. Like seem if you maybe some other people on the chat. I'm not as much as ops guy as I am dev guy, so I'm definitely oops guy. So <laughs> great. Thanks, Alex, for that presentation. Um it's like we've got Thank you exactly 15 minutes for the break. So um, see everyone back here in 15 minutes. Uh, hang out on the hallway track if you like. Um, okay. See you in the next track. Bye, everyone. Thank you.